Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we've got a real quick, very lightly edited video about uh, lining the ship up over her blocks. Uh, today we are filming this about two hours before it's going to go live. It has been a busy day here in the dry dock. It's been a busy several days getting the ship ready. And we're expected sometime late tonight after dark for the ship to go under the blocks. So it won't be conducive to taking video footage at that time. Hopefully tomorrow we'll have something of that. So, behind me, uh, you can see Battleship New Jersey in Dry Dock 3. Dry Dock 3 still has the water in it. The, the ship is still mostly floating at this point. Although, her stern has touched down and uh, we're probably only about five hours away from the rest of the ship touching down. So, I, I just wanted to talk about how they got the ship lined up. Uh, this was one of the things that was uh, asked about the most in the live streams that we've done the last couple of days uh, as we've gotten the ship here. So the tugboats got us to the dry dock. You can see there's not a whole heck of a lot of room in there alongside the battleship. The tugboats could not come into the dock with us. So as the ship started to come over to the sill, the tugs at the aft end of the ship started to back off and go to the bow, and then eventually there just was no room for the tugs at all. So they're pushing the, the ship in entirely on it. Uh, they're getting off at that point, and the ship is being pulled by the folks around the dry dock. We had eight lines pre-positioned on the ship to pass off port and starboard. As we started to come in, we passed off the aft lines, and then so forth and so forth up the ship. And the uh, big crane here was holding a big blue line that was wrapped around the capstan at the far end of the dry dock, and it passed it uh, through the last little... Uh, eye at the back of the ship to be tied off to the last mooring bit. So once we were in at a certain point, the tugboats had to back off. Well, now the capstan starts to pull us in. Meanwhile, the line handlers are keeping the ship centered in the dry dock. So a big concern at this point is as they pull the ship back, if the tide takes her into one of the wing walls or the other. Uh, and so that's what these lines on the side are for. The guys are, are holding her taut in the middle. So. They get her where she's supposed to be lined up fore and aft. Uh, we'll talk about those markers in just a second. And then they tie her off on each side, and she's sitting there. At that point, they have to put the case on in place, which is the door at the river side of the dry dock. Then once that's in place, they can start draining it. As they're draining the dry dock, they play out from both the bow and the stern a plumb bob. That plumb bob is lined up perfectly with a block that the ship isn't going to set on at each side that just has a pad eye in it and a string going up to it to a little float. And then that float, that string goes down through the eye and comes over to the wing wall so that you can adjust the level of the float. So as long as the plumb bob is suspended above the float, you know that the ship is where it's supposed to be. If you see the plumb bob over here or back here, you know that the ship has shifted somehow as you're draining the water and you have to readjust your lines and pull it back into place. That can be done essentially with these big cable come-alongs like this wire right behind me. It goes to uh, like, like a three foot long handle that they can crank to really pull the ship over with, with just a, a little bit of manpower. One of the most amazing things about this project is we're putting an 80 plus year old ship in a 100 plus year old dry dock and we're using essentially the same methods that uh, mankind has been using for millennia. Plumb bob is like the earliest, easiest form of level that uh, was ever devised, just a weight at the end of a string. Another key part of this project is to send divers down. We're doing this for two purposes. Purpose number one is to make sure that the ship is lined up properly on the blocks. Purpose number two more so important for us than, than other ships, our uh, through hull openings are blanked over. Some of those blanks might be flat, some of them might be boxes built out over the uh, outside of the hull. We don't know which were used where. Uh, we've got some blueprints, not, not a complete set of blueprints for what work was done on that. And uh, I've, I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times, a plan is just a plan. Just because that's what is written on the blueprint doesn't mean that's what happened. So the divers went down and visually inspected all 304 of the keel blocks that we're sitting the ship down on. Now we've said in the past, 
An Iowa class battleship is designed to have 306 keel blocks. Uh, during Missouri's 2009 dry docking, they were able to delete one to allow them to fleet the ship one less time. And um, we found another one that we can delete. We're about 500 tons lighter than Missouri, so uh, we, we were able to delete extra blocks there to, just to make things easier. So we're doing this with 304, roughly four ton keel blocks. And uh, they're all lined up where they're supposed to be. So we are draining the dry dock now. And uh, hopefully tomorrow you'll see the finished results. What part of the underwater hull are you most excited to see? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the ongoing dry docking project. You can also get your tickets to come see the battleship in dry dock at the link in the description below. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.